Journal 4, Part A. A bird flies at a uniform speed of 22 meters per second. It wishes to fly to its nest. <coughs> Straight away, the first question here is, is that with before the wind is taken into account or after the wind is taken into account? And one of the things I gave here is the various ways of announcing VP and VPW. So various ways of announcing VBC, body and carrier, various ways of announcing VB, but that should be VB. VP for the person or VB for a body. And funny enough, I went through all the questions I thought, but I didn't actually go through this phrase here. If it flies at a uniform speed of 22 meters per second, would you think, and this is what you've got to ask yourself, and you, if you get this wrong, then all the question is wrong, is that before the wind is taken into account or after? Before. Before. And, and it is, and, and hopefully we get a couple of other hints on that in a minute. Uh, a bird flies at a uniform of 22 meters per second, so the velocity of something is 22. So if it is before, is it velocity of the bird or the velocity of the bird relative to the wind? Here on. Yeah, it's what it starts off doing, so the velocity of the bird relative to the wind is 22. We're going to be drawing a diagram, but we just stick our information up there now anyway. It wishes to fly to its nest, which is 250 meters due north of its present position. So a quick diagram. It wants to fly to its nest, which is 250. Can I call that a letter? I can just call it B. So its nest is up there, it's down here, and that's 250 meters between the two. In fact, I want to get rid of that 250 because this is going to be a velocity diagram. So if it wants to go from there to there, Shane, that's what it's going to finish up doing. So what are we going to call that? Uh, VB. Velocity of the bird. That's, what, that's the one piece of information you do know, so you can stick it into your diagram. Now what you've got to figure out is what direction it's going to head off at. And in order to work that out, you have to know one other piece of information, which is the wind direction. The wind direction. So we go back to our question. There is a wind blowing from the southeast at 18. So just to get a little figure for from the southeast means it's blowing northwest. From the southeast is over here, so it's blowing northwest. At what angle? Yes, yeah, southeast means 45 degrees. So basically, that's the velocity of the wind. So I can get rid of my axis here. I know the velocity of the wind is in that direction, and I know if the number is 18. I'm almost there. I've only got to put in two other pieces of information. Then I've got my diagram, and then I've just got to work out angles. What I've got to decide, one of the things that you should be putting in here, and I should have given to you, was when you're drawing the diagram, down here, I don't know if I'd give it here or not. The diagram needs to be drawn. You'll be told to begin with this. Yeah, down here, the very bottom of this page, where it says key drawing a diagram, the note that you should be putting in there is VP and VPW both start from the same point. So always, velocity of the body and the velocity of the body relative to the wind both begin at the same point. Right, where are we? Yeah, we want to draw a diagram. Diagram means we need a triangle. So we need three lines. We've got one. We know the velocity of the wind would be going into our triangle. What we've got to ascertain is where it fits into our triangle. So here's a little birdie. It's got to go from A to B. The wind is blowing at this direction. So the velocity of the bird is going to start here. First of all, is it going to go down, or is it going to go up to get to B? <coughs> up. And here's the trick. Kieran, back to you again. Is it going to start off going left, or is it going to start off going right? Uh, it's not going right. Why? Yeah, basically to counteract the wind. If it started off here, and the wind is blowing this direction, it would never end up going straight across. So it starts off going in this direction, and you keep going up. How far? Until you can finish with the wind. Very good. Until you can take that vector here, and stick it in. So basically I know if I keep going up about this far, at that stage I could get my wind velocity here and complete my diagram. So that's the velocity of the wind, Vw. This is the velocity it started out at. So V, body, carrier. Put my arrow in there, I've got an arrow there, and I've got an arrow there. Now remember, this is just the, the direction it started out at. At each fraction of a second, it heads off in that direction. 
the wind brings it back there, so it heads off going here. So in each fraction of the second, it's trying to go that way, the wind is blowing it back, and as a result, it keeps going up and up and up in that direction. Right? So it doesn't go half a mile over this way and then get blown back half a mile there. In each fraction of a second, each almost instantaneous moment in time, the two effects are counteracting each other to make it go straight up. We need three pieces of information and we have this question cracked. What do we know about our triangle? Right angle. Where's the right angle? Oh, no, yeah. 45 degrees on top. 45, okay, yeah. so we put in our easy numbers first. The bits we definitely know. That's 22 VBW. Body and carrier. In this case, it carries the wind, so VBW is 22. We know the wind is 18. So we need one other piece of information, and it's usually going to be an angle. <coughs> and the only angle we really know about, this looks like it's 90 degrees, but we can't assume it is. So we say, well, what do we know anything about? We know that this angle here was 45 degrees. So we say, can we use that in this triangle here? So there's the wind. So there must be a 45 degrees either at the top or the bottom. Can I assume it's 45 at the bottom? No. No, but I do know. And here is one of the tips I said from drawing a diagram. Uh, it may be helpful to extend the line slightly on all sides. In other words, what I mean by that is you don't know where you're getting an angle. So you basically draw an axis here and here and say, do I know anything about the angles on either of those three corners. And you say, well, I knew the wind was 45 degrees, so that means this guy here was 45 degrees. Two pieces of information, included angle, I can use anything else I want, or I can find out anything else I want using either the sine rule or the cosine rule. So here we go back to the question, what's it asking us to find? The direction to the nearest degree in which the bird must fly to reach its nest. So basically, what direction it must start, it must fly at. So I have an angle one and an angle two. Which of the two angles am I looking for? One. Why one? Because we tell it in terms of east to north. All right, are always in relation to the x-axis. So usually the expected answer would be this angle down here in relation to the x-axis. So you couldn't put it in north, some man doing east. Actually, you could, if you put this angle here, let's say if this was 30, that was 60, you probably would get the marks, if you put in 60, if you said, if you north gave the, the context, yeah, if you said the north and south and east and west properly, you would get the marks. Whereas if you just gave this as an angle, you probably wouldn't have to give the context. But you should be given the context in both cases. Mm -hmm. north, east, and west. <coughs> so basically, I'm looking for angle one. So angle one equals question mark. So how do we go about it? Ivan, since you came late. So, uh, so start me off. Um, sine 45 over 22 equals sine 2 over, well, sine whatever, yeah, over yep. 18. 18. Over 18, yeah, and I really should put a yeah. number out there. Just yeah. So you'll, I uh, wanted such by doing it, you do all of this and you get that angle 2 is equal to which? 35.35. So my angle number 1. equals, in fact, no, you gave me the wrong angle, you gave me the Oh yeah, just look at the solutions here. The solutions, they give the angle alpha, uh, sorry, five degrees inside. And they actually give full marks for that, but it would be more correct to give it out here. So if it's 35 inside, it's going to be what outside? 55. Okay, let's make that round that off. 35 degrees, so this is 55 degrees. So that's your answer. And again, to be a little bit more accurate, if you want to put Notation on this, what is it? East and north. East, 55 degrees north. You can say east, and then you go 55 degrees north. Or how else would you say it? North, 35 degrees east. Or 35 degrees east and north. Yeah. Well, again, sticking with here, it's 55 degrees. If you start off with the 55 degrees, what? North of east. North of east. <coughs> the reason I'm giving you that, and the reason I'm going through the trouble of putting it both ways, is sometimes the questions can give you either of the two notations. So you've got to be familiar with the way it's written both ways, and that both makes sense. Okay? It's always relative to the x-axis, so the 55 degrees, but there's two ways of talking about the 55 degrees. Okay?